Good evening, everyone. Welcome, one and all fans of Hyperion, Overwatch, Overwatch 2, or, of course, uh, fans of yours truly, myself, Lord the Ethan, and Portal Man 5, coming at you guys to capture all of the Overwatch 2 action that we have happening here at twitch.tv slash Hyperion. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And, uh, and Portal, uh, how are you feeling this evening? Doing good. It's been way too long, I have to say. It's been a while since we've had a nice little Hyperion tournament. Should have done a draft, but um, it wasn't my fault I wasn't there. <laughs> it's a, It should be fun next time. Now, tonight we do have a... It was supposed to be a tournament, but we've got two great teams. we got Team Ashy versus Team uh, Always. Two random teams of 10 people ready to battle out to see who would come on top in a weird show match of best of five. Yeah, it's it's uh it, it's it, it's gonna play out like a show match, uh, but uh, but it's the Hyperion Blitz Cup tournament. It is a day long event comprised of these uh, these two teams, like you mentioned. It's almost like a pug, ten players uh, assigned to uh, to two different teams to duke it out. The second of which we'll be having in April. Stick around to the end of the broadcast to learn a little bit more about that. But for now, let's focus on the series at hand. Absolutely, it's Team Ashy versus Team Always. I, I actually think that Ashy won't be here tonight or at least not in the first map uh, it's in spirit. which uh, yeah exactly <laughs> uh the first map of which is going to be Li Zhong tower uh portal you and i we've started on this map many a time in our 10 years overwatch casters and uh and and i i, I gotta mention you know for as sick and tired of it as i got in at the back end of overwatch one i think that uh, i think that Li Zhong has uh, has opened up as actually a pretty Pretty good control point map, uh, at least in my opinion, for Overwatch 2, the new 5v5 format, the tank changes, hero reworks, uh, and as well, just the fact that DPS isn't as, well, horrible of a role that it used to be really able to capitalize on the arena team deathmatch style of the game mode. Right, but also just the Legion in general forces a lot of diversity out of teams with each map, some being more just full on control based brawl it out and more and the other two being more about aerial control and just getting those picks outright. So be interesting to see if these teams will hold up. Speaking of looking at these teams, I saw that team always has four main supports. That's their main roles. Yeah. They're like four supports. Thankfully most of them said they would uh flex, but I think they just kinda said that just to say it. None of them there's just no one here that says they won't flex. So Take that with a grain of salt, so <laughs> might be a little bit of a scrappy fight, but we'll see if supports can still out aim just normal damage players. Uh, over on Team Ashy, though, uh, it does look like they're actually a little bit tank heavy, a little, just a little bit. Unfortunately, Team All, uh, always couldn't make it tonight, but that takes out one of the tanks. But just two tanks in general is a little difficult to balance it without that uh, tank duo that used to have in Overwatch One. Rest in peace to that poor game. <laughs> Indeed, indeed, I, uh, gone too soon. <laughs> is there, there is only one damage on each team, huh? Man, that sucks. I think there's only <laughs> like one one person who's like main role is damage. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, uh, but you you make a you make a good point, Portal. You know, with these rosters uh, being comprised of players who who specialize on the tank support roles, what's well, going to be interesting? Uh, you know, one half of the coin is you know can they perform well on this other role that is different um uh and of course the the other side of that coin is you know how familiar then will they be with the play styles of some of the heroes that they're going to be looking at right so uh you know for for me i'm not a dps player but i absolutely know how i'm going to want to take the matchup against a zenyatta uh so uh you know i, I think that um uh, even for the players who you know damage or tank or support might not be their main role we're still going to get to see a little bit of insight from these players um that uh uh, that really show us the depth of these rosters once we're able to jump into uh, to map one. Um, uh, let's t uh, let's l talk about the other maps briefly here, Portal. We'll be jumping yeah, from sure. Lijong Tower, um, which, like you said, kind of forces variety out of team comps. And we'll, go, we'll be going from that one to Dorado for our next map. Uh, which is going to be a little bit more dive heavy. I think I'm a little bit more fast paced, mobility based compositions. From there, you go to hybrid, uh, which is going to be our King's Row uh, game. That's your uh, honorable Rhine Zarya uh, agreements, except there's no Zarya, mostly Rhine here and Rush. From there, we go to push on New Queen Street, uh, which also is good for a myriad of compositions. I'm hoping to see some Wrecking Ball in particular. And then finally, uh, if the series gets that far, Busan, which, by the way, Portal, is the only map not currently in the competitive map. Pool, which is going away in season four. 
I, I forgot that Busan was taken. I, I missed Busan, man. I, I, I honestly all the maps that were not might, it might be a little bit it's off topic, but, that but I, I think I speak from okay, whatever. <laughs> I, I forget, I forget, speak from most players that Busan is one of the better made control maps compared to some other ones. I just you know, just off top, off the top of my head, most of the plays I've had with friends were on Busan, and it's just fun. Uh, I would be interested in seeing if we do get the new Queen Street here. Like I said, it, it's very difficult to see if these teams are a little bit top heavy. Uh, you you would always just assume based on the guy with or just a team with three supports to be like uh, a little bit more shaky. But I've seen crazier fans here, and let alone in Hyperion, so I wouldn't be too surprised with that. Uh, like you said with Dorado, the Dive compositions, I wouldn't be too surprised on. We've kind of seen a little bit of the worst case scenario with, uh, oh shoot, what was it? Circa Royale, that's it. A lot of people complain about those giant sightlines here, and Dorado has a little bit of that second point. So wouldn't be too surprised if that gets abused as well. But then again, it is a for fun pugs tournament. So I don't think people are taking this way too seriously, like a giant Overwatch League Max. So get ready to see a lot of stupid comps. Some May Zarya, May Bastion. Uh, to what, what's the most stupid character? Oh, yeah, Torbjorn. Just the whole nine years. Oh, uh, you just leapt off that playing yeah, portal and, 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 and named like three very good heroes at the moment. I would Excuse be interested to see some uh, some teams uh, maybe go back to forcing the Genji. Uh, 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 one composition that has diminished in power level but not gone away in the slightest is actually the monkey. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the banana rush. That's the uh, uh, composition that we saw played in the Overwatch League. Uh, oh, I guess it's Overwatch Two League Grand Finals uh, yes. uh, at the um, at the end of last year uh, was. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, was the was the monkey comp with uh, with Sojourn, Kiriko, Lucio, and uh, and any variant of Sombra, Reaper, Tracer, um, all of whom, you know, all of these heroes are, are still extremely powerful, and that's actually uh, a really fun thing about Overwatch 2 at the moment. Uh, despite the matchmaking and ranked woes, uh, fact is that balance is actually it's cited uh, by high level high level pros and content creators as really some of the best it's been since Overwatch 2 released. Uh, off the back of that balance. Balance. This is really, uh, or that's really the reason we'll see a lot of variety. Hopefully this evening, I wouldn't complain about some mirror matchups this evening. It means that I get to pick apart some of the some of the micro, uh, which is always a lot of fun to me. Uh, but um, uh, but I am very excited to see all the different looks that we'll get to see from these teams. Yeah, and we'll see it just that we're still waiting on a little bit to make sure everyone's ready and going here. It doesn't seem like that everyone in the lobby is finally ready up. So we're going to go right into Legion Tower. As we said, very diverse map towards control side. It does look like that we will go to night, uh, night city, night markets. Gosh, I could not figure the words. It's been a while, man. I got to get back into this. It's been a while <laughs> for Hyperion. Nightmare yeah, is the map we're going here, and so hopefully we'll see that Symmetra rush if these players are going to go full tryhard. Wouldn't be too surprised it's Hyperion, but <laughs> if not, I, I, again, I wouldn't be surprised with just a full-on brawl in the middle to see who wins on top. Man, I wanted to see Day Market because uh, yeah, there, there ain't a lot I like Get more out. than Orange or Watch with the uh, lighting oh, changes God. to Ilios, Ike involved. Uh, what are some started, of the other maps man. that got orangeified? <laughs> I mean, Li Zhang also to a certain extent, although I do like their their New Year uh, uh, or Chinese New Year version. Uh, I'm sorry, Lunar New Year versions of uh, of the Racist. Li Zhang map. So it's nice and bright and sunny outside and beautiful. But producer opted for the uh, for the nighttime. Unlucky. Uh, you know, Porto, I mentioned, you know, I was hoping to see a little bit of variety. I wouldn't mind a mirror matchup, and we're getting a little bit of a mirror matchup now. It's, uh, they're both very kind of rush-oriented comps. A little bit. I am interested in the Cassidy composition here. I, I've seen a lot of this in just normal matchmaking and competitive and stuff, but the Cassidy Mercy pocket is huge here. And I'm actually going to go back off of it to Kiriko Lucio, which I think will work better. That Zuzu is just really powerful in this close team comp. Yeah, absolutely. Full fight already broken out here on the objective. Uh, there's Ooh. quite a bit of space maintained by team always, but as she's able to strike back, Dexter Griff cutting Crimson Wolf and then going after Dibs. Able to go aggressive onto the support line here and now spread thin. Uh, team always is going to have to back out and forfeit the first fight. Maybe after a short stagger or two there from Booze. Get a little bit of ult charge, no problem. Reset with the team here. Nice TP out there from Kabadozer. A good small star. It's just the Reaper had so much room there after taking out the Cassidy that no one really tried to 
deal with him. And so Team always has to fall back, get those picks out, and Team Ashley just gets all the room, and now they just go back again. It's almost a repeat. Ooh, yeah, and, and Team Always, Wasteman able to land a shatter there, but it's nothing that can follow it up on. And so going for the pin, but the Immortality Field and the follow-up from Asian Ninja is more than enough to make sure that this point remains in the secure hands of Team Ashi. A very quick fight there, a very quick reset for Team Always. Only at 30%, we already had two fights, so that's great for RM right now. Still sticking on the Rhino, I think that's smart here, especially knowing that Shatter is on its way. Only thing they got to really worry about is the Death Blossom from Reaper, and so with that, they're going to swap over to May to try and block him out when needed. Probably something with Wastepan as well, because, you know, Shatter takes so much damage from that shield, you just want to have some sort of protection. Yeah, absolutely. The Maywall is a great way to uh, to go about that, but you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to war. Uh, I'm sorry, to war through a couple of ultimates here. Ooh. Starting off the amplification matrix is gonna necessitate the use of the sound bearer from Boost, but it's not gonna bail out Wasteland from the overwhelming pressure that they are faced up against on the main tank roll as the team kill Gong sounds. You're looking at a reset here for Team Ultimates. A lot of pressure, but a little too much pressure as Team Ashley uses four of their ultimates, but so a window as well <laughs> in order to knock out Team Always. Always hasn't really used anything besides Shatter yet, and so in order to get some sort of value, they need to have something land. They're going to start with the Dead Eye, it's smart, forces them out, and that gives them a lot of room here. Yeah, uh, you're going to almost get a couple of picks Ooh. there, but the Immortality Field is nicely timed. The Sound Barrier drops immediately afterwards. It's going to help Team Always weather uh, the uh, Kitsune Rush here. I'm sorry, Team Ashy weather that storm. And while the rest of Always pushes onto the objective, they find themselves cut off by the Reinhardt and the Ooh. Barrier already down waistband. Now the rest of the squad, Ashy, is looking to reset, but there's not enough time. That's the conclusion of the first map of Li Xiong going to Team Ashy. The team always just cannot find anything right now. Team Ashy's been strong on the support lines. That's what saved them through that last fight. Dead Eye took everyone down, but Lamp was able to protect them, and then Beat just gained all of that lost HP right back to him like nothing happened. Kunai Rush came in to try and help him out, but just didn't come in time for him to get those picks. So unfortunately, Team Always isn't going to be able to hold up. We do move on, though, Team Ashy does have a little bit of a disadvantage here going in a very high ground oriented map or just aerial map in general so that's going to lean more towards those high high uh high velocity players but it doesn't look like anyone's going to go for it they're just going to stick to what they know and it's going to be something interesting that you don't really see too often especially with this new buff is the ball is something that's been talked about recently very contentious in the overarch community so we'll see if anyone can pull off this place at least for now, Wasteband is able to secure a pretty uh, hefty pile drive. Hack does come in onto Dexter Griff, but it's quickly cleared by the Wraith form. So much damage here on the point as well, and a lot of sustain. We haven't gotten to mention the difference uh, between the Baptiste and the Kiriko yet, what that means for both of these squads, and no one has fallen yet on either side. So at least for now, we have to understand that sustenance is good for both teams right now. But which one has the better point presence? Right now, it appears that it's Team Ashy walking away with a pick onto Dibs, which is really going to open this fight and force Team Always to yield a little bit of space, ultimately the objective as well as point progress ramps up until it's finally completed for Team Ashy. Yeah, there are a lot of hacks for Team Always during the first stages of that fight, but the lamp in the way just wasn't able to get those picks off, and so Team Ashy are just holding on, not really losing anyone in these last couple of rounds, so for Team Always, they gotta find that opening pick somewhere, get those one-shots, get some sort of value. They do get an early window off, though, so that's gonna spend a little more, more time just wasting down the clock and making sure they just get that desperate percentage. Yeah, it's a little bit of a luxury for both sides. For Team Ashy, it's an opportunity to stabilize and maybe a uh, pick or two to secure. For Always, it's actually time that they can buy just playing out of the window and then all forced down of them. But there's a Photon Barrier as well. Minefield's aptly deployed to Wasteband, securing quite a bit of value off of it as well. That's two picks and a third rolls in after some follow-up comes in from Dibs onto Tacey Taco. There's only a Reinhardt and Lucio here remaining. Asian Ninja returning from spawn on the Ana now instead of the Baptiste. But no one is able to connect to the objective from Ashy for now. Always will take the point. Spin and win for Wasteband. It was a great photon barrier from Tasty. Knocked out half of those mines as they were being deployed by Wasteband, but didn't matter. The mines were on the field were going to get knocked around by his... Just that little ball just made around the point doing its damage, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Team Ashley do have a couple switches. We're going to see Torbjorn come out onto the field to try and get those picks. It's going to be very helpful against the Tracer. Just one tap and you're dead. But with Tracer comes that ultimate with that pulse bomb, so one small wrong movement and they're all going to be perished here especially that EMP. 
see Crimson Wolf lining it up. That's Ooh. three hacked, only because the fourth had actually perished there. Dexter Drift uh, uh, eliminated by the... Uh, oh, that's brutal. <laughs> Sleep into a shatter. There was also a shatter there onto Cabadozer, which means Nevix is able to push in, but is uh, up against uh, quite a bit of damage here. Nice TP in from behind, but an even better anti-nade to cleanse, or uh, rather to, to prevent uh, any aggression onto Nevix there. Still gonna have some stall here from Team Always, though. It's a huge stall. Ryan throwing that shield out, giving time for Lucio to get back and beat it out so that they have enough time for this second support to get back and hold the point is huge here. They are still laying a little bit of progress to Team Always, able to get up to 64%, but that's nothing too bad when you take it right back and now tie the game to match point. Team Ashley are looking really strong here. They still got Nano, while Team Always only really has Kunai and Rush. We did see a great Minds play, but it's very difficult to have a second great Minds happen in the same round. So if you can pull it off, great. If not, it's just fine. Kunai and Rush is going to be able to help them out just fine. Team Ashy just need to play towards that Nano. I would love to see that Nano tour about with that Molten Core. I think that would be the best combo here. There's a minefield out now, and uh, Nano not used Ooh. quite yet. There might not be a need for it, uh, but the Katsune Rush is going to come out from Kava Dozer. There's the uh, uh, Molten Core to prevent its use, as well as a nice finishing blow onto the K uh, Kiriko player of Team Always. Uh, for the rest of Team Always, it's actually kind of a frantic see what we can do here or reset. The decision doesn't seem like it's been made, and so uh, the members of Team Always have fanned out all over the objective, kind of dealing with individual threats and hopefully going to coalesce back on the objective at the last second. With three seconds to touch, you've got two in the back on Asian Ninja and a couple on the objective, stalling it out for the faithful main tank player of Always to return. Nice stick there from Dibs, but... The Wraith form is able to cleanse Dexter of that ultimate. EMP comes through, but Tasty Taco's turret has already secured one, and, and the Torbjorn player themselves has uh, taken out Dibs. No ultimates on either side besides the Nano Boost in effect with uh, with Dexter, who's coming up very close on the Death Blossom. Should there be a touch from Team Always, but there won't be. Team Ashy takes the first map of tonight's Hyperion Blitz Cup. Yeah, you talked about a little bit during that play-by-play -play, that team always just had a little bit of miscommunication on if they could touch or not, given the fact that they still had about 10 to 15 percent left to spare in order to really get that last overtime touch. And so if team always just held back for just a little bit longer, regrouped and recontested at that point, they might have had a better chance than what they've showed off right there. But still a good showing from team always, but it does go in the team Ashy's favor 1-0. I really like that shatter from from Nevix in uh, in the play of the game, and it uh, it's it's a nice demonstration of the of the competency on on the tank role, not only for for Nevix and and their ultimate usage, but also for uh, for Wasteband and theirs. You know, we we commented already on the uh, on on how good the minefield was, uh, but as well that kind of that self follow up, right? Um, and, and that's always what we're wondering uh, when when we use our ultimates is you know, hey, wh where is the follow up? Where is my team to to come <laughs> and make sure that this play I made gets capitalized on? But hey, sometimes you just got to take matters into your own hands and make things happen. For our next map, we'll be heading into Dorado, which means uh, possibly a departure away from these Reinhardt-based, rush-oriented brawl uh, compositions, and that will end up cycling onto more of the dive composition. Unfortunately, no Oranger Watch for Dorado, as we have once again picked the nighttime mode. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping they go away from the Ryan play as well here, especially because I believe that is what Team Ashy is strong in right now. Just full-on Ryan combat. I, I think they had, like, what, three, four, maybe five shatters from, from just Team Ashy alone in that first map, which is something unheard of, especially for Control. So stay away from the Ryan. I think this is going to be the best way for Team Always to pull it out, which, looking at the map pool, might be a little bit difficult. But don't worry about it right now. Just get the maps while we can at this point. Uh, for Dorado, for Team Always... It's hard to see a strong song through there because they only really had one or two good fights after, you know, a very strong mind play and a very strong EMP. So it's the difference is where you can you find that value again and if. And so for Team Always, I would say just go full force onto that ball and just hope it plays out. And Team Ashley does something weird with maybe, I don't know, like a Zara or a Sig, and that might help them get the win. I, I kind of like the the idea that that you're kind of leaning in towards portal, uh, which is you know let's let's play the composition that like we're really comfortable on the heroes right. that we're really good at, and and see if we can force our opponent to 
change, even one component of their composition or their strategy uh, might lead into uh, us gaining a favorable advantage either on our comp that we're on or the comp that we'll end up swapping to. Um, uh, I would be trouble uh, to come up with a, an immediate example for you guys, uh, but uh, you know that's that's your job, anyways. Portal, big brain analyst. Shoot. So you claim. I do want to see monkey in this map. That's that's what I know. Portal. A monkey or mirror monkey. Just one. Just, just one? one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, just yeah. One. I want to see the counterplay between like monkey and wrecking ball. Uh, monkey Reinhardt. Uh, you know, maybe we get someone who tries to do something funky with a roadhog or a uh, uh, or a. Um, or Junker Queen. Uh, we do have a, a swamp uh, on the rolls as well. I think Booze is moving to the tank roll, uh, yes. and uh, and always is in for waistband, which means always will be uh, filling on the support line since that was uh, what Booze was playing there on Lijong Tower. Uh, Portal, does team always even out the series here uh, on the uh, on the Dorado mark? Wait and see. No, <laughs> if, if oh, I had to make a cop out, a little bit, a little bit of a cop out. But if I had to make a guess here, I think swapping off your support line is the best way here. Most of your players on Team Always also are support. So if some characters aren't able to get those output that you're really wanting to, maybe a quick swap here. Because we saw on Team Ashy that a perfect support line is what you need in order to win these matches, especially <laughs> with that back Kiriko we saw last map. So it wouldn't be too surprised there. Uh, with Booze going on tank, I haven't seen him play any tank characters i haven't seen many of these players play tank so it'll be interesting what you see i wouldn't be surprised if they go on to winston here like you said it's a i, I wouldn't say it's a very easy tank at all but it's one of those tanks that you can definitely pick up and sort of stumble in into oh he does play here as take for paradise he just oh well i do a <laughs> i'm a I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. <laughs> You're a fake and a fraud. I'm a fake and a fraud. But hey, I was half right on something. They did go ball here, like we were saying earlier. So I'll give myself that, okay? I'll give my pat on the back there. That's my one prediction that I can just leave and go home and cry. Yeah, yeah. And I'll give my slap of the wrist. Uh, uh, the thing that I'll be falling to sleep crying about this evening. Uh, Nevix, I'm disappointed in you. I wanted to see Monkey. Did somebody say? Um, I did, oh but apparently no one on either team did. No monkey here on this map. Traditionally a really good pick on Dorado, uh, but I do actually really like Nevix on the Sigma. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned Portal, those long sight lines that you can contest with this barrier. You have self-sustenance uh, uh, like you would on a Roadhog or a Junker Queen with a gr uh, with the Kinetic Grasp, and as well, the rest of the composition oriented around Nevix's Sigma, it makes sense. All the pieces fall into place for their comp. Yeah, it's almost the exact same comp that we saw in Legion Tower 2 besides the Zen, which I think is a strong asset here, especially going on uh, Sombra Tracer here. Just full on target acquired, go for it, make sure they get out of the way here. Not a lot of movement here, but Team Ashley doesn't really have a lot to capitalize on that anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. Always is going to suffer the first blow here. Tasty Taco claiming the life of Crimson Wolf. That's going to be a little bit of a, uh, a bite in the butt there for the EMP Ultimate Generation. And now a rotation from the high ground coming in from Team Ashy poises them for success in this impending fight. Hardly a fight Ooh. to be had, though. The ball is going to roll through and then harmlessly pile drive onto the objective while the supports LOS the damage sight lines. For now, a lull in the team fight while both teams figure out how they want to approach the next stage. Well, see, that's the great thing about ball. You don't really see it until after you watch the replays or if you watch the point of views in the enemy team. But ball just disrupting the enemy DPS is a game changer for him because then should have been dead there. But with that disruption, he was able to restagger uh, re himself for this next fight. Now, we're seeing ball is boost taking a lot of damage early on. And so with someone pushing out so far, it's really difficult for them to have a strong team fight here. So they need to regroup, make sure they get a strong hack on maybe the tank or the one of the support lines and knock him out and not get picked out too early like that or found out too early marked a little Ooh. bit early in this fight Ooh. is going to be uh is going to be booze uh, by asian ninja by asian ninja going a little bit ambitious looking for that pick ends up sacrificing themselves getting caught out by the sombra a revive is the say uh, salvation for the ninja here brought back into the team fight and now uh, present to heal the rest of the team and deploy the implication matrix it's uh only half of it is there it's almost that um uh, that window that it used to be instead of the garage door that it is now but off of it some space created some healing dealt and a pick secured despite losing the mercy in the process uh, uh here i think this is another lull though portal there's not too much being capitalized on by team always uh, kind of like what you mentioned earlier what they should have done a little bit earlier it was just their support side there so you could have just 
held W and go for it there. They do throw out ultimates here, though, as we start forward a team fight. Team always does lose oh, their tanks, the so they're gonna have to go back here. Oh, the Flux missed! Oh, that sucks right now! Oh, good kill for Carbonine, though, in order to get that tank out of the fight. Uh, the revive is still there, though. Uh, oh, it's not! It got canceled. canceled by the EMP, so WebMD is unable to follow through with that. Now down there, tank team Ashy uh, is at a disadvantage, but not on the back foot quite yet. They have to outlive the pile drive and the adaptive shields coming from Booz, adding sustenance to their presence here in the back lines of Team Always, and also making sure that the cart can roll through into this first objective capture. The first objective that always has actually... Uh, yeah, that Team always has taken so far in the series. First point to run. Bit of a slow start from Team Ashy, but I'm sorry from Team Always, but once they start again that fight win, it just went smooth sailing from there on out. Team Always was on the pack burner and told Team Ashy saw two supports, didn't want to push up on them, and then Team Always went, hey, we could care rush this, right? Full force done and dusted. Point one taken from Team Ashy. At this point, they, they do have window backs, so that's good. They're going to need to use that for an actual hold here and not just as a fight finisher as they were in the last couple of times. But besides that, I feel like they can still hold this pretty well. They've got a good high ground. They've got a great to Ash that I can just nail them with shots, especially with the window. So a lot of things you got to worry about for the team always, especially when you're a Kiriko alone. Yeah, uh, always themselves is uh, is not going to make it out of there. It down a support now. I think uh, Team Always is going to want to play a little bit safe, but with the expenditure of the Immortality Field from Team Ashy, there's a little bit of aggression that might be able to be warranted here from the attackers. A pile draw, I'm sorry, a, uh, a grapple and a PD onto the high ground is going to deal half damage to the turret, but also a little bit of uh, pressure onto Dexter Drift. Uh, forces out the over, uh, uh, yeah, the overload, um, but the turret is still up there on the high ground, which means pressure on a Crimson or Dibs if they try to contest this uh, this area. Uh, at least for now, you know, the uh, team always kind of waiting for those moments of explosive burst impact, which might be deployed here. There's your burst impact, uh, but it's onto a turret instead of the Torbjorn. That'll be back here in a couple of seconds, and now the Transcendence in response, or as a, <laughs> sorry, in addition to the Katsune Rush here committed on the main sideline. Now, without both supports, uh, support ultimates, uh, Bob is free to wow. run damage into the back lines. Nice deployment from Team Ashy there, and it is going to force Team Always to at least temporarily back up and reset. It's been a thing for Ashley for a couple of fights now where they get these opening picks uh, thanks to their tank and then they just don't capitalize on it. Just let the payload keep moving. Maybe stop a little bit here and there, but still give them that room in order to keep these fights going. And now look, Team Always is just going right through. They're able to get picks. They're going to throw a window, but it's all going to be a little bit too late at this point. For Ashy, what they want here is a stabilization off the back of the Immortality, I'm sorry, the Amplification Matrix. I'll never stop making that mistake. And the self-destruct that is on standby here. Your right portal with the other ultimates committed here. Uh, Team Ashy definitely needs that stabilization. But for Team Always, this is a fantastic opportunity to really uh, uh, hammer home their time bank for the third objective by capturing it here. Uh, however, point presence from Nevix is uh, is not currently contested. It's really the rest of Team Ashy that needs to be dealt with. And so, Nevix can't yield their position here on the card, but they got the self-destruct. There's the EMP connecting to five. It's a big EMP, but where's the follow-up with two gone from Team Ooh. Always? They're looking really uh, rough around the edges here for this fight. Booze brought back into the fight. It's able to uh, contribute to a little bit of ultimate generation on the next minefield, but they will eventually have to roll out and reset, hopefully bringing that next ultimate with them. He's waiting too long. He's got 30 seconds. Thankfully, he's not going to get picked out here, though. Very dangerous play from him, but from Team Ashy, they're just staggering these fights for a long time. During that fight, Diva had multiple attempts. Oh, just barely okay, get away from the reload, reload, man. Always feels Diva, bad. I know, right? Diva was so close again that Mercy Kill, but I believe, was just staggering out in order to make sure the fight lasts as long as possible. So now they're in this overtime situation where they have the old advantage. Team always has nothing, and they just have to force it here. I just uh, noticed that uh, as well, WebMD had proc the, uh, the Valkyrie just uh, maybe a little bit too early there, or just early in general. It means that the Katsune Rush from always here is going to be meaningful. There's not going to be uh, as much mitigation on the side of Team Ashy, but there is a lot of damage. You'll see the window is in effect. Bob on standby from Tasty Taco and pick secured there onto Kabadozer. Nice coach gun there onto Dibs as well. Alleviates pressure from the off angle and with Dexter Griff's turret, the best <laughs> DPS in the game. You have a second point hold here from Team Ashy. And a Attainable win condition for both sides. It's always nice when four out of five kills in a team fighter from NPC abilities, huh? 
<laughs> Bow Hell from How Bob dare you? Curry. We need more constructs in Overwatch 2, and I cannot wait for support hero. Uh, what is it? What are we on? Nine it, it, hero thirty seven. Is support the next support? Is the next support going to be Chat GPT, and it's just going to aim walk to people to <laughs> heal them? Is that what you're gonna, hoping for? Gonna, the support's going to give you advice on like how to play the game, uh, like during uh, <laughs> during the fights. Chat um, GPT, I need healing. Overwatch is a team-based shooter where you must capture that point. And <laughs> chat, no. Some, no! you know, actually, some early speculations on uh, on Hero Thirty Seven. Uh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Hero Thirty Nine. I think um, uh, yep. is. Uh, yeah, here on Hero 39 is, you know, that they offer uh, a utility that's like mobility related. Um, but, um, what do they give like people uh, jump boost? Is that well, see, <laughs> but it, un unlike you know, uh, Lucio with speed or Bap with uh, exo boots, you know, what if it's like, uh, uh, what was his name, uh, Sanjay from uh, from Symmetra's uh, short stories, uh, being able to construct you know, stairs, elevators out of uh, out of hard light. So, I, I, you know, there's so some possible you. really interesting interactions <laughs> there, you know, a little bit of Fortnite in there, uh, uh, build yourself up onto the high ground, that's the way to do it, at least for now. Yeah. We've got Portal. We have 23 more days until that support hero finally releases. So for now, all we can do is speculate. One of our speculations, Portal, is which team wins. Dorado does always even out the series or just actually take a nice lead here. Uh, finally, we get to see the Winston. I would say that always would take a better fight here, but because of the Winston dive composition that team actually has, it's going to be very difficult to go against a two <laughs> double sniper combo, which I was going to say, nice but shot. great shot from Crimson. How, how was that a headshot, actually? That was, that was an insane shot there. Uh, team Ash has a lot to really go for here. They do get a good amount of room, but with Tracer in the back line, it's only going to be a matter of time before it always starts to shut down. To see always on the mercy here is going to invoke a little bit of pressure here from taking a tasty taco who does have the recall forced out of them never in the meantime just playing the objective web md going critical and then going down in the fight might mean an early reset opportunity here for team ashy to get their bearings on how they want to approach the next fight but this was a quick wrap nice sleep on the booze during the accretion cast do they get punished for it there's no one really there though that's the thing it's just winston and honor so you know, if a tree falls, it doesn't block. make a sound, but doesn't look like it doesn't make too much of a noise there. Nerve gets so dangerously low, but it does stay up, so they're going to be able to have this team fight full as Tracer gets slept in the back line. Great play from Team Always. Dexter now in the back lines, no longer now in the spawn of Team Ashy, and an aggressive dive Ooh. from Nevix as well, possibly an effort to just get whatever ultimate charge they can out of this fight before getting out. I I'm a little bit surprised, Portal. We haven't actually seen like a real reset here so far from Team Ashley. They, they do uh, walk away down one now. I think that this is just a, a great opportunity to uh, to find a new way to approach this next fight. Well, see, the issue with Overwatch that people have been saying for a while is that when you die, you get 10 seconds to, you know, wait until you respawn. But then with characters like Tracer, or Kiriko, or Soldier, it takes three seconds to get back in the fight. So losing a Tracer early fight doesn't really mean too much because you can just stagger for five seconds what? and then you're perfectly fine here. So with Team Ashy, I think that's all they're doing. They're just getting the pick and then kind of waiting and then losing the pick and just waiting again. Well, there's a pick. No waiting to, uh, no waiting necessary, at least for Ooh. now. Flux does come out from Boost, but I think it was another whiff of the Flux. So now Boost and Nevix are even for this map. A handful of other ultimates come out, including the Nano Boost, which was, uh, which found efficacy on Nevix and the, uh, and the Pulse Bomb. Really good fight here from Team Ashy, but you might be able to see an uh, an ultimate recontest of the first objective. No, no, no. it's just a setup on uh, second here for always. Yeah, they're just gonna resort to just going back on the high ground. I think it's smart here. Make sure you keep that high ground for your Ash and Widow, because that's really who you're gonna just try to hold on and bunker behind from here on out. I do like that the Diva is getting played a little bit more here. Diva's one of the mm -hmm. better tanks for these situations. If anyone jumps up, you just knock them down or just full rockets into them. Do see that uh, walls will be put up for Team Always. We'll know that the flankers are coming up left side, so Diva's gonna be right on top of them any second now. Oh, Echo getting very dangerous positioning here. They're, they're trying to get the high ground, but it's very difficult with this team composition. There's a lot of damage to fight through, even Ooh. if there is the Monkey to Burn as well. Dexter eventually goes down. Nice anti-nade onto Nevix there, but it's not going to mean much because the Primal is there to disrupt. Buying time for uh, WebMD to bring Dexter back into the fight, and this means that the, uh, that the full aggressive push can finally come into effect. 
pressure here into the Ana. Bob, uh, I thought that was Bob being deployed, but no, it was actually just uh, like a boop onto Nevix in the back lines, which was really apt, actually. Duplicate do a form does come out of uh, Dexter, but they quickly forced out of it back onto this high ground. You're looking at another possible reset here from Team Ashy, but it's it would be a very short one. It would have to be here. I mean, Tracer tries to dodge for its life, but it's not able to. Yeah, that's going to be a full reset at this point. You have to wait for uh, Casey to get back anyway. I would be curious if he sticks to the Tracer here. Yes, he will to try and deal with that. I, I think it's an interesting situation because Team Always the Snipers have been on point. I mean, look at that. They knock out Mercy early as well. No res to really help him. So that's another 10, 15 seconds. We do see Tasty though, after that kill, going on to Bastion. So Echo Bastion... Interesting composition, especially when you don't have the high ground. The main <laughs> issue here is because Ash and Widow are playing so high up, the only real option is going to far right side, which Team yep. Always will know and will counterplay against it. And th th Team Ash, you cannot make a decision. Are they going back again? The sw what? What do yeah, you going now? Yeah, you yeah. go full they're, dive? They're, is that? They're making. Like, they're they're changing the identity of their whole composition. It's gonna be uh, the Reinhardt. With so oh, no, 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 I know what's going to happen here. I know what's happening. So they're going to teleport under the high ground. Uh, Nevix is going to pin. Uh, Asian is going to apply the nano when the pin, like like when the turret gets set, a uh, teleporter gets set up. And then the team fight's going to be won here by Team Ashy. Invariably, right? Where's the nano? I was wrong. There's one. There we go. There's the nano. I was right. Oh. <laughs> Block of the bomb. Oh. Nice. Elite there from Kabadozer as well. Shuts down the potential aggression from Nevix. The nano wears off just in time as well. Although the bio ends up being blocked here by Nevix. There's still too much pressure to remain on this high ground portal. Just like that, we are down to a minute 12. Got a lot of time wasted in between just figuring out what team comps want to do. Another switch from Team Ash. Yeah, he's a Reaper. At, at, at this point... Oh my gosh, and then he goes Zark. Is this Mr. Heroes? I thought we turned that off. <laughs> There's so many different team compositions from them. Like, I, I don't understand really these changes here. You're going up against Double Sniper and a D.Va. You need someone to deal with that Widow, which, I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't have to deal with them if the bubbles are there taking up all the damage. But besides the point, there's a lot of things you gotta deal with. If Widow needs to be one of the top priorities, especially when Crimson's been hitting shots like that all round. With only 30 seconds left, it's only a matter of time before the point gets back over to always. Uh, Dexter ends up going down early in this fight as well. There's only 25 seconds remaining, which means you're going to be hard-pressed to get like a, a real uh, reset here to bring that fifth member back. So at least for now, it's playing slow around the objective, inching it forward and seeing how you can use that to buy you a little bit of space. There's not going to be much space here to work, and though operating now is Bob from Dibs. Nice, nice cast onto Nevix and WebMD uh, both going down, securing the fight and this round and this map here for Team Always unless Ashy is able to make something really serious happen. But there's only a Reaper now on the objective, surrounded by their uh, <laughs> opposing contemporaries. Eventually taken out of the fight, now always going yeah, go, aggressive with the clock! Oh. But there's not enough time remaining for blood to be shed by the most bloodthirsty support player. For now, Team Always takes Dorado, ends up the series. I mean, he, he got the Reaper, though, so we, we can say that Mercy, you know, <laughs> attack Mercy works out here. Good 1-1 one, one for a team always, or to tie it up. I think there's a lot of... I think it's the same situation we had in the last round. There's a lot of miscommunication of what teams want to do. Again, it is bug tournament, so it's very random of these rosters and compositions. So next round, hopefully, they can start getting those team comps back into order in order to get that extra point to give them the lead in this tournament. Love to see what uh, what the order uh, becomes for both of these teams, what they end up deciding uh, they want to do here as uh, as we prepare for King's Row. But part of that preparation is going to be taking a short break. Go hydrate or dehydrate, grab a snack, or tell a friend that you're watching and to join you, because we will be right back after a short break.
Welcome back from the break, everyone. Hope you guys are uh, all set and situated for some more Overwatch action. The series has been tied up here between Team Always and Team Ashy. Heading into the third map of the evening, King's Row, you'll have a Team Always starting on the defense. Uh, so they have the opportunity to uh, set the momentum for the match, unless Ashy is able to uh, lead with a dominant attacking round. We'll be jumping into King's Row actually almost immediately here at Portal. And, uh, and so it means we'll, uh, we'll have a great opportunity to uh, to look over these compositions and talk a little bit about them. But I don't know that there's going to be much to observe, Portal. It's, uh, it's King's Row. What else should we expect besides Reinhardt? based rush brawl oriented compositions well i mean just to not waste your time here i believe we're just going to be seeing the normal ryan may and then bat kiriko here or some sort of composite composition of mm -hmm. lucio's and or some sort of weird uh, <laughs> dps that we've seen in the last rounds i mean well, we, we saw a czar trying to counter a widow. It, it's, <laughs> it's anything can happen at this point, and it does look like Team Always are going to fall into that mold uh, for the start. A little curious about Team Ashy here going on the Ana. I, I do sort of get why people sort of lean on and tend to play Ana more often or not, but yeah, the play needs to be for the back here. Just a lamp, especially with the recent buff that it just got. Uh, giving you even more HP buffer to deal with. It, it's such a needed pick here going into King's Row. Uh, the only issue really uh, going to be for Team Ashy is going uh, to be the rush composition from Team Always. They, they just have to have the fight start first because in these pug competitions, that's what really matters here is conducting the fight in the way that you want to do it. And for Team Always, that's how they've been able to hold it on. So yeah, it looks like I was all four fire strikes exchanged here early in this fight. So both Reinhardts know uh, that they want to get aggressive, have a good idea there. Interesting rotation around the uh, the Ooh. wide angle here. Nice oh. sticky there from Crimson, unable to land the follow up. But the immortality field does find its deployment there in the back lines of Team Always by Kabados. Our waste man ends up going down, succumbing to the pressure damage, and that's going to give Team Ashy a lot of agency here on this objective. Possibly a quick capture from the current attackers as well. Something that doesn't get talked about too much about this is that the fact that we get to see assists in this game. And if you're paying attention, Wasteband had all five players looking at him when he died there. And so it was a complete uh, wipeout 
on the kill board baron with our only pick they're able to take point pretty easily so it does allow team always to have a little bit of a hold in the archway it's usually staggered out here but Honestly, it's kind of wasted fight. Just a whole charge at this point. There's not a lot you're going to be able to get here uh, for the defense side. I think that the, you know, really the best that you can get here is just time off the bank here with this uh, with this archway hold. Uh, there's the uh, nano boost finding its application. I think that that was there onto Nevix, but they're unable to put really push past the objective. Uh, not quite yet. Waiting on the shield to break the wall to be deployed oh, by uh, by Dibs. But now there's a lot of damage coming into Nevix, and they're ultimately going to go down off the back of that pick. Uh, a, a hyper aggressive push here from Team Always. They get zoned out by the dead eye from Griff's, uh, from uh, Dexter Griff, which is um, uh, which is actually a nice use of the uh, uh, of the ultimate. Yeah, just take out that room. It, it, it's rough for always right now because they're getting a lot of these great pushes, but Crimson's just unable to find those shots yet. So once he starts finding that aim, it's going to be really deadly for always. Going to be, yeah, Crimson finding a couple of picks here for Team Always. Really, really nice finish on the fight here. Um, and, and you know, uh, uh, you and I could go back and forth talking all day about uh, about the arch hold, but uh, I think that is being facilitated really well at the moment by uh, by Team Always. Thing about this is, you know, for Team Ashley, they still have four minutes left in the time bank. Well, yeah, because they had a very quick fight. They got one pick, first point, and just completely wiped it out. So you're going to have a lot in the time bank for the rest of Matt, for the rest of the round here, if it even gets to that point. It's a little surprising for Team Always that they're able to hold this arc for so long. Usually they get to the elbow, and it does look like we're going to be finally getting there at that point. Yeah, 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 it had to happen uh, at some point, and and maybe with the assistance of a, of a handful of ultimates as well. That was three committed from some pretty vital members of uh, of Team uh, of Team Ashy. That was the Shatter, the Nano, and the uh, Sound Barrier. Um, the cool thing is that it was able to disrupt, or you know, that combination of ults was able to disrupt any play that could have been made by Dibs and Crimson. See, I usually go by a little bit of a rule in Overwatch that if you're going to use three ultimates, at least get the point, and that's what happened here. Once you get use four or five, eh, it's a little bit too much, but you got the point. <laughs> yeah. That's all that matters really so far, and the only thing they really have to worry about now is a dead eye and a blizzard, so it's not too bad for Team Archie. Yeah, that, that'd be a powerful combination, but you know, really what you have to make sure if your team always is that Wasteband is living and they currently aren't. Blizzard did find his deployment, but the follow-up isn't there. After losing the main tank, the rest of Always is going to have to back up. Now Always themselves is going to go in, oh. ultimately getting frozen, forced to back out. But there is going to be an opportunity to retouch here from Team Always if they play their cards right. Namely, no not feeding here too early. But always is going to be able to get in, get back out, and then back in for the Death Blossom. Oh, the Shatter is a nice response to Griff's ultimate. That was perfect there. Just in time before supports are able to get there and help him in the fight. It was a good start for the Death Blossom. I mean, that would have been great if it landed, but just the Shatter just counters the Death Blossom. So you got to be careful with that. Great block on there, and that's going to help Team, uh, team Always to hold on for this defense. Still a lot of swinging here to do if you're in Nevix. Don't want to be swinging the dead eye here from Crimson Wolf, though. Coming through, holding, holding, and ultimately drawing on nothing in particular. Nano now applied onto Nevix means that they can go in and swing the hammer as freely as they like. Always deploys the sound barrier as a part of the defense and now charging through the amplification matrix that was deployed you have nevix looking to be as aggressive as possible securing those final blows and then ultimately shielding off the window so that the rest of the team can capture the objective which they all have to hold on to deal with always yeah, that's a strong team by green for dmarchi especially because they really didn't throw out too many uh ultimates there for them it was very difficult for uh the team always on the left to you know, waste those, I wouldn't say waste those ultimates, just use those ultimates and not hold on to the point here. But it's not too bad. You still got three minutes to really stagger out here. And with that timing, there's a little plenty of time for you to come back and look at that. Just full rush in to get those kills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, this is what we love and hate about the rush composition portal is just the fact that, you know, it, it's it's everyone rush in, push all of your cooldowns and see who comes out on the other side. But man, isn't that also just so much fun to do? You know, maybe yeah. not fun to get rushed down, but... Oh man, to go in and just swing your Reinhardt's hammer, that's that's the dream. Well, the second dream is also having a nice shatter, kind of like in bowling, where <laughs> everything just kind of falls out. Always standing still in the area. Part of the plan, part of the plan. Brilliant shatter, yeah. though, in order to get there, but doesn't find the beat, so that's going to knock him out and help Team Always. 
Now there is going to be a nasty pin there onto uh, uh, Nevix uh, into the back lines. Nice play from Wasteband, or actually maybe Nevix had pinned in. I actually can't quite remember what I saw. Didn't take my schizo meds today, and there's still a lot of visual clutter, even despite going from 6v6 to 5v5. Needless to say, without the tank, Nevix, uh, the rest of Team Ashy, is going to want to back out and play tentatively. Tasty Taco using the Assault Config to buy a little bit of extra space and time for Nevix to reconnect. Lots of ultimates coming into play for this next fight as well, including the uh, uh, the uh, oh. artillery configuration from uh, from Tasty Taco here soon. But really, you want to find a use for uh, for the Shatter and the Death Boss as well, the Nano here first. Saw so Config is going to buy a little bit of space here, which is important considering that Nevix doesn't have a barrier to help them push forward. You have the uh, Nano Boost applied onto them. A boop effort comes in from always rewarded for their position as well. And the rest of the team always will stabilize off the back of a sound barrier, despite the presence of the Death Blossom harmlessly booped into the back lines. You still have to deal with an artillery, I'm sorry, a assault configuration tasty taco. Not looking so tasty there if you're Crimson Wolf, and always ultimately ends up going down as well. Susu expended an in extra rest to last on the objective, but that's not going to be the storyline, the narrative here for Team Always, er, sorry, yeah, for Team Always. Uh, Ashy will be able to capture the third objective, albeit with only more than uh, a little more than one minute remaining. Yeah, closer of ultimates there to really hold it out. Uh, team, that's a good start for Team Always, though. Of course, you know, Kings Royal as a whole is a very difficult map to capture. But with that first start of losing one player and getting and losing that first point, I'll take a minute on a clock into three minutes that it probably should have been. So that's good on always for having that strong comeback for the defense side. For Ashy though, I do like their uh, adaptability to changing compositions. It's whenever it's not way too much like I was in Dorado, but a nice middle ground where it's just one or two here and there when you desperately need it, that Bastion really made the difference towards the end of that round. So for a team always, it's just going to be a matter of recognizing those changes and then adjusting accord accordingly quickly enough before Team Ashy has a chance to re-change re it and re-counter it again. So wouldn't it be too shaken up, but I wouldn't be surprised if we go to map uh, round three here. Yeah, that wouldn't be too surprising at all. Um, you, you know, at this point, King's Row has been in the map pool for for what uh, six, nearly ever, nearly seven years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so teams are are more than familiar with how to, you know, how to play this map, especially with you know these. Is that a gold gun? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh god, it's got that little gold metal um, uh, gun buddy on it too. Oh, uh, which, uh, by the way, weapon inspects are coming. Uh, just not until uh, at least season six, past that point. Um, Before or after CS:GO two. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, now, sorry. Rush composition, <laughs> rush composition mirror here on King's Row. Although, like you mentioned, uh, importantly, the difference here is uh, Tasty Taco's Bastion, which is already providing ample oh pressure onto the advancing formation of Team Always. They're forced to use the Immortality Field here around this corner. Definitely a little bit more early than Cabodozer would have wanted, but it does facilitate the rotation through Hotel and onto the back lines of Team Boy. Ashy. Still, they're ready for it with a wall and another Assault Config. Nevix walking away with a pick oh. onto Dibs as well. Things are looking a little bit harrowing here for both sides. Ultimately, Wasteman ends up going down, pressured on both sides of the barrier, and the rest of Always will have to reset. Ooh, yeah, not before getting a nice it. sticky onto Ooh, Wasteman. Ooh, Crimson, there was riddle! That's what we needed. It's, I said it once to say again, Bastion does get sleeped on a lot here, but the one that you really have to work out for is Cassidy. He has such high damage for how quickly he can get shots off if you're very accurate and that's what crimson has finally found here a little bit shaky at the start but it's starting to bounce back and starting to really dig deep in order to get those picks great play and almost very similar to what team always had to deal with in the last round five minutes on the clock that's a great start in order to get this play one moving Ooh, go keep going on and look at what Crimson Wolf has done. The, the, the time uh, that you would have been able to burn off the bank, the hold that you would have been able to maintain at the arches here if you were Team Ashy, has been disrupted with those late picks on the waistband. I'm sorry, onto, uh, onto Nevix and WebMD. Oh. You have secured yourself the archway and an easy advance through it, uh, avoiding definitely the uh, the artillery config. And now they have to uh, mitigate the assault after it expires. This is uh, Team Always' opportunity to push. And with the use of an amplification matrix, that's going to be helped. WebMD ends up going down, but a shatter here from Nevix is influential. Nano ultimately finds his application onto Dexter, who is not going to be able to make enough happen with it. Two picks is massive, but they're still members of Always remaining and none of Ashy. 
Well, the unfortunate thing here is that team actually had a Maywall blocking off most of uh, what that Shatter was trying to go for. Dezo was blocking off window, but you know when they're all knocked down, there's not really a lot that window can do there. So unfortunately, that does bite the butt of Team Ashley. Big issue here, though, is that the Bastion for Team Always has just been rocking it, and now, oh, I'm sorry for yeah. No, oh, no, it is Ashley. I was right. I trust myself, Pet Portal. You know what you're doing. <laughs> Team <laughs> Team always with a triple ultimates here compared to Ashley's only blizzard is going to be a game changer here. Ashley did use uh, what is it, to bash an ult very early last round without too much outcome here. So now happening with kids of shatter is going to be a game changer. Yo, that one felt motivated to me. Wasteman with a personal vendetta against Nevix. Goes for the solo shatter, ends up connecting him to a shield. Nice try, and we'll get him next time. Mission failed, as they say, in my favorite video game series, Call of Duty. I don't think that Ice actually is my favorite. And Persona's yeah, you, pretty you good. Really, Persona's up there for me. Uh, <laughs> Um, and that's just a quick fight, a quick cleanup here for Team Ashy. They've stabilized off the back of this uh, initial defense. Yeah, a little bit. Now down to three minutes, so that's a, always a great start here, especially going into the second point. If you can waste down at least two, maybe even just finish it off entirely, that'll be ideal, but it's very difficult. It's a good way to get out limp, though, as we start the first fight. There's the beat as well. A blizzard committed by Dibs uh, on top of that. There are three frozen. WebMD was able to cast the sound barrier. You still got the nano on standby, but you're not going to be able to use... Actually, Ooh. no, you are going to be able to use the Shatter here. Nevix finds uh, themselves committing it, advancing then onto Always and uh, Crimson Wolf, who are uh, trying to just back up and live for the time being. Interesting pin here from Nevix. Not sure what the plan was with that, but at least for now, the plan is to find cover. Uh oh, Wait, is Nevix uh -oh. trying to bait someone? He's got no, he's got him. Oh, Nevix is baiting him? Oh. <laughs> That's I don't actually know what the plan is here, but uh, hey, <laughs> another fight is broken out here, Portal, and, and now it's yeah. Nevix on the back foot. Ultimately shattered. There we go, Wasteman. I told you you get him next time. There was a Blizzard cast as well. Dibs ends up frozen, but the rest of Team uh, Always are going to be able to uh, just advance through this choke and buy back some of the space that they've been denied. I believe Nefex was trying to find out Always just before that next fight's happened, but going down to 22 HP, forcing out the Nano from your team, and then losing the payload too as the worst case scenario. Oh, if, okay. That's just a little dirt. It's not personal until you tee back. That's the rule here. So we'll see if that happens <laughs> so far. But we're in the clear. <laughs> ah, it's gonna be a brutal dead eye Ooh. here. Yup, Nevix sustains Gone. all of the damage there. Nice sticking on the WebMD as well. Man, Crimson is one tool of void, and not just because of their peerless aim, but also those magnetic and magnetic grenades. Wow, that's hard to say. Those yeah. mag grenades have been particularly brutal uh, for the Lucio player for Team Ashy. Uh, Lucio player for Team Always is uh, having the time of their life, just escorting their team to uh, really waistband to wherever they want to play. Yeah, but now it's getting almost identical to what we saw in the last round. 2 minutes 40, Team Always with a good ultimate lead, but Team Ashy still has a good amount of ultimates to counter if those do come up, and I wouldn't be too surprised if Team Always has an early beat here to just try and stall out the fight. You've got to have something big here in order to really cap it and make sure you have a little bit of a time advantage going into round 3. Oh yeah, because you don't want to walk into round three with uh, with you know uh, two minutes in uh, in your opponent's bank when you only have the one. For now, it's a, it's a call is kind of to play safer on the objective, and especially now that there's an amplification matrix on the battlefield as well. But look, there are other ultimates on standby or being generated here for Team Always, so they're going to rush in. Despite the presence of the Maywall, they no. remain uncut off there. However, Nevix with the nano boosted pin does find dibs, which is absolutely massive. The uh, amplification, I'm sorry, the immortality field has also found its use here. Uh, Wasteman goes to the Shadow Crimson. Crimson. It'll follow up with the Dead Eye as well. Another magnificent magnetic grenade. And a good round here for Team Always as well. I don't know what happened in between the break and now, but Crimson has just been popping off like crazy on Gasly recently. The amount of just not only dead eye kills, but just normal and magnetic grenade kills have been popping off these fights, completely turned the sides in his team's favor is impeccable. With that, Team Always has about a little bit over 30 seconds lead going into the first round, and what we saw in the or not in the first round, but in the first uh, second half of the game. For Team Always, we, we already saw which both teams were very, very quickly uh, able to get the first point. I wouldn't be too surprised if it's just about Orch play at this point. We saw Team yeah. Ash had a much stronger uh, defense, or sorry, Team Always had a much stronger defense uh, last round. 
but with this new defense of well, now it's brass tacks of if you win this, it's game over. It's not just about over. It's not just about wasting time. For yeah. Team Ashy, is just going to be about getting these fights done as quickly as possible, just like they did a couple of rounds before. Yeah, absolutely. And then also making sure not to get stymied at these uh, various uh, chokes uh, for King's Row, right? So you think about the arches, you think about, uh, uh, you know, the, the second uh, to last or the last corner of Streets phase. And, uh, and then, of course, the final stretch uh, into the foundry. Uh, it's uh, it's it's not the most uh, simple uh, endeavor here. It's both teams rolling out, uh, able to uh, to avoid the May Wall. Still, the aggressive pin comes in here from Wasteman. They find themselves anti and Mortality Field used to bail them back out, but they've already sustained quite a bit of pressure. And a handful of cooldowns have also been elicited here from Team Always. Dexter able to find uh, some uh, very high skill picks here with the Junk Rat, bouncing the nades from wall to wall, person to person. Ultimately, Wasteman doesn't end up going down to the spam. It's going to be Nevix uh, going down, trying to disrupt uh, always enough for the rest of Ashy to uh, find one of those meaningful picks. There's a meaningful bio nade here, but now down their tank, Wasteman, uh, or down their tank, Ashy is going to have to back away from Team Always and Wasteman as well. Look how quickly Kabadozer has built this amplification matrix. It's huge there, especially after that reset, getting all of that health right back to you. So they're going to be able to have this up. Oh no, did they get the round? They do. That's a huge game changer. Is anyone going to touch it? Wills, so they're going to be stalling for a little bit. Oh, but that's going to be it. They're already going to get two ticks, though. It's going to be a very quick team fight for a team always. But man, Team Ashley, that's still not a too despicable of a round. It was a great play to have the Drunk Rats start, able to get those picks up, but they just weren't able to get wind down quick enough before Team Always was able to get reinforcements and make sure they went and capped that first point. So for Team Ashley, it's going to have to be a full hold or nothing to prevent the 2-1. Yeah, it's like a combination of factors that that you and I would would absolutely have a ball uh, going over. Uh, uh, submit the replay right. code so that we can uh, nerd out a little bit. Um, anyways, uh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> do a little caster vod review. That would be terrible. Uh, no, the no, we, we that do we not publish those. Yeah, no, uh -huh. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> and um, so you know, all kinds of myriad factors contributing to the loss of that round. Really, because uh, you can't call it a win. You didn't capture the objective. You can yeah. still win. But it, really, the main goal was to capture that first point and then push all the way to the very end. And so long as you captured, you were satisfied. Uh, so for for this uh, defending phase for Team Ashy, um, you know, uh, definitely a little bit unnerved. We only have 82% of objective progress until we lose, you know, and that's what we have to prevent. Ultimately, really, the thing that led to that loss of the round was just you only have a minute in the bank. That's a huge disadvantage. Yeah. Now, here, you'll see... Um, team always is also confronted with a similar disadvantage which is the low time bank but they've got a whole 30 seconds and you saw how close uh, all of our players were to having their ultimates in that round and the main thing is just going to be who can get the reinhardt first that's going to decide these fights here and with those early may walls to try and knock them out it's just going to be about burning them down and make sure bat can't get those healings in on them in enough time with that early lamp too it's going to make a difference oh, but if it just gets deleted Thankfully, with that time bank, they're going to be able to reset very quickly and not lose too much time in order to get back into it and get to that 82%. Uh, yeah, but Wasteman was uh, Wasteman was chasing, or rather pinning, uh, the power fantasy yeah. of Reinhardt, which is just to go in and swing. And I like the energy behind it. Wasteman is already uh, re-engaged back with the team, but because they're there, it means it's time to assault configuration here for Tasty Taco. Nevix ends up going uh -oh. down, which is a great opening pick here for Team Always. They're going to rush onto the objective. They have the, uh, the immortality field in effect. They're coming up on the amp matrix as well, but they, they don't need it. They've got the picks. 82% is all that you need here, and it's going to start with one tick. And that tick is achieved. You've got 33% of objective progress on the board. Is there going to be a touch here from Team Ashy? Are they going to be able to connect to it? The ball tries, but gets booped off. And that's going to be the conclusion of King's Row resolving favorably for Team Always. Bringing themselves back after Durant. It, that's the difficult thing about bunker comps, especially when it's do or die at the last point. It's all about if that tank lives at longer than the other tank. And when your Ryan gets frozen out and shattered, or is and charged and just completely annihilated by a bastion turret, there's only so much that Ryan can do besides sulk. It's so sad for those teams, but it's all right. Team always will lead 2 1 as we go into our next match, which is push on New Queen Street.
I'm really excited for uh, for new Queen Street, uh, uh, particularly see you know what the tank matchups look like. We've had our respect for Ryan v Ryan duel now on yeah. King's Row. We don't have Too to many. play him anymore, even yes. if he is the best tank in the game. No, um, no, uh, no. Yeah, that's been my no. ranked experience portal. It's pretty much you and the other tank lock whatever you want to play at the beginning, and then you counter pick each other as the map continues, and then ultimately you both end up on Ryan. Um, Figuratively or like my lobbies, Ryan's oh. good. I mean, it, it, he's okay. He has a shield. He's That's about it. And a big old hammer and a fire strike that does 100 damage. So does Tor, but no one cares. <laughs> Size doesn't matter, even. God. Yeah. Uh, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, whoa. 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 <laughs> Heading into uh, New Queen Street, I, you know, I definitely wouldn't complain about the uh, the Ryan matchup, or perhaps Torp slingshotting his hammer around as if it's uh, some kind of uh, some kind of Mjolnir. Uh, but um, uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's just it's just Norse mythology. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, like I said, I would like to see some some of the other tanks co uh, uh, come into this map. This has actually historically been a really decent map for Zarya. Um, uh, she was a very popular pick, uh, not only early in Overwatch 1, uh, just because she was very strong, um, but also because, you know, the closed quarters and also long sidelines of, uh, of New Queen Street really opens up opportunities for, for Zarya to find and navigate those off angles and and uh, kind of nuke down the uh, supports, which is, you know, Portano, you remember this uh, back in Overwatch 1, that was at one point her role is she was the off angle nuker tank. Um, uh, which was uh, which was always uh, extremely engaging. Um, uh, it looks like we have a uh, a swap coming in as well for Team Always. Uh, you're going to have Booze coming in and uh, and Always stepping out. So I think that that means Booze mm -hmm. is going to be on the tank roll and Wasteband ends up on support, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. So you know, Portal, uh, like we mentioned earlier, this is a, a great a, a great chance to see the depth of these players and the uh, and the flexibility of their hero pools. Well, we'll see if it's going to work out here. Last time Booze was on tank, it was able to give Team Always a, or, or sorry, it was able to give Team Always one of their maps. So we'll see if it was able to hold on for New Queen Street, which is a complete toss up here. I've seen a lot of matches where it's mainly about those first one or two fights and then get the point or get bot over to that first point to really solidify it. Yes, sometimes we do have those, you know, crazy comebacks, but mainly here it's going to be all about that first brawl to see who really is going to take it here and from what we've seen so far team always has been a little bit more dominant dominant on those early team fights so if they can just keep it up here for just a little bit longer they might be able to solidify the series you know i just realized that this uh hockey player statue on uh in in toronto on this map is, yeah, is an omnic yeah yeah, it's an Omnic. I, I didn't I didn't realize that. That's that's pretty cool. I, I, you know, apparently, actually, no surprise. Omnics in Canada have it uh, have it nice and easy. But then that's in, actually uh, Chat GPT's brother. London. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you, Portal? <laughs> Those cursed words. I already like the tank matchup that we're seeing here. Uh, and now Booze has chose uh, chosen the, uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 scoundrel pick here uh, with the uh, with the battle cattle Orissa. Uh, uh, and Nevix is leading uh, uh, leading the charge for Omnic rights across the globe. Suffer as I have. Oh, and he is suffering off the map with you, Nevix. <laughs> that Peace was out. mean here you Jeez. and your dreams for omnic equality a quick team kill here uh resulting in some uh some push progress for uh for, for team always i i mean that, that i i think i have to that was just the biggest tank dip i could have asked for oh my lord you spear your ramatra off the map you rush into the enemy team you spear in mercy as well with the rest of the kills what more can you ask for from an Orissa at that point? At, like in this it's sort of scenario, pick. it is a scoundrel pick, but at the same time, you still need a Sombra to kind of counter Orissa at this point in order to deal with her and her massive amount of damage that's just being thrown out at the enemy team. Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, ooh, oh, you know, or maybe all you need is a uh, is Dexter on the Reaper there to uh, to help cleanse that threat. Now, you know, there's still a lot of picks being secured here in favor of Team Always, but there's no uh, there's no bot progress being made. Instead, they all want blood. <laughs> They're all running on Asian Ninja, killing the Ana. That's the call. Yeah. They managed to get it done as well, uh, ultimately oh forcing my Tasty back into spawn as well. You've got Wasteman inting their brains out there on the Lucio, mm. finally bailing out. And Crimson is just maintaining the sightline, saying, I'm just going to continue. Um, well, I mean, I've, yeah, he's got his ult, so I don't think Crimson <laughs> needs to build ult, but no, sh it carries shouldn't. over, right? You know, when you use Zedai, now you have an extra 30% based on the damage that you dealt while you had ult. 
Yeah, every ult you broken. save goes to Overwatch 3. So. <laughs> Ooh, nice Wraith there from uh, from Dexter to avoid the uh, the dead eye, and ultimately the swap here from Nevix is uh, is is suitable, uh, but it hasn't amounted to Ooh. anything quite yet. Still a team fight to fight through Kabadozer's uh, uh, coalescence to mitigate as well. It's gonna force the Nano out here from Asian Ninja on to Nevix, who it looks like is taking a uh, or was taking a short nap. Might have been seeing up arrows instead of Z's there. Uh, just a little bit though. It, it does look like Team Always. Did they get the butt scratch? I think they did. Yeah, they did just yeah. barely. So they're going to be able to get that forward spawn. So it, yep. it's good for them. For, but for Team Ashley, they need this fight that end at ASAP with so many support on. So now the Arisal going to survive. Team Always is actually going to push the fight back in their favor as they're going to hold on just barely. That's right. You had the uh, you had the artillery config come in from Tasty Taco there as well, but it wasn't able to get anything. Ultimately, Team Ashley. Uh, just suffers pick after pick, uh, but that fight was important for them. You know, so they are uh, they're they're working on the generation of some pretty fight changing ultimate abilities. Yep, bot hasn't really stopped moving too much this this game. Already down three minutes, and the point is only 23 meters away from the end. Team Ashley needs some sort of ultimate, needs some sort of beat or something. There we go. There's the big ultimate that you needed. Yeah, huge death blossom. Great, uh, uh, a great play on Daboos the there. Uh, you know that might be actually part of the win condition, part of the strategy here for Team Ashy as they look to bounce themselves back. Only, only by the way, three and a half minutes into this push map is uh, is just making sure that Boos isn't able to play freely. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, Ursa kind of a scoundrel pick, and so you know perhaps dealing with a scoundrel first is a great way to open up some of these fights. You're gonna have graviton surge if you're Nevix here as well, and you're definitely thinking about how to use it. Throwing it into the Orisa isn't the call because of her fortify. And you're not going to have the chance to use it this fight because of the Death Blossom that just rained damage and death and destruction in the form of a Blossom onto uh, Team Always. Or... Oh, what, what was that Whoa, beat? wait a Come second. On. They used the beat in the Coalescence as well. Oh, no, the BM! You can't do that. Like, the see, BM. This was the thing we were sort of talking about. Like, Team Ashley, their strategy is this kind of like comeback feature, but... In push especially, you don't want to be in this situation when you're on the back foot at all because it's so detrimental towards the team fights, especially with the forward spawn. <laughs> Boos went for the spin there and then uh, and then their lifeless corpse just kind of <laughs> slingshotted across after the application of the nano boost on the Nevix was able to help them burn through that tank pool. Uh, would have been nice to have a sound barrier there or perhaps a coalescence, but those are luxuries that uh, Team Always cannot afford as they prep for this next fight. They were still able to get close spawn, which means Boos now on the Reinhardt finds themselves trapped early in the Graviton Surge as follow-up comes through for Team Ashy. Boos ends up going down. Ooh. Crimson Wolf slept out of the Deadeye. Nice cast of the ability there, and despite the magnetic stick, our Crimson is under too much pressure to follow up ultimately. Uh, sent back to spawn. Yeah, those are some good ultimates to solidify those last final kills for Team Ashley. Team always uh, don't really need to worry about too much here. The only thing they really need to worry about is getting some new support ultimates up since that last, you know, <laughs> I don't know weird play that was, but for Team Ashley though, it seems like they can support on for just a little bit longer, especially because there's no real ultimates online. Good start from Team Always from Crimson, really starting to get in those picks, and with Nev going down quick as well, you gotta start reconsidering what you need to do here. I, it's just a quick uh, cleanup of that fight there, and you know those support ultimates that uh, that we wanted Ooh. so badly in the previous fight. There, they're coming back up here shortly. Look at how aggressive the rest of Team Always is getting as well, just to chase out WebMD. Leave him alone. Where is it? <laughs> he disappeared. Oh, there, there she goes. <laughs> ah, she's gone. Big stagger there, though. Yeah, especially now because Team Always is going to have that forward spawn if something, you know, a ride does happen. Uh, but. At this point, what can you really do from Team Ashley? You don't really have a lot of ultimates, you don't really have a lot of damage. Your Zarya is just getting completely destroyed at every moment as she's on 1 HP. You gotta do something here. Well, there's the dead eye. Hard to uh, do something about that when you gotta LOS it like that. Crimson walking away with two, and the bot is walking away from Team Always as well, but not for long. Dexter found out with a pin. A pin that seemed random to them, but very, very much targeted on Booze and 
This is where things are looking a little bit grim here for Team Ashy. This is the match point of the series. If they want to win this Hyperion Blitz Cup, then they've got to make something happen, like you mentioned, Portal. And the Death Blossom is a great opportunity to take agency back on this bot. Something Portal I've been wanting to say, but I haven't had the chance to say, is really pushes decided uh, in the first three to five minutes of this map. That's the hypothesis uh, circling around the Overwatch community at the moment. And this may be a situation where actually, the uh, uh, because of the way things unfold here in the next minute or so uh, this might actually be ashy's map to take oh no! not if they lose webmd though a little unfortunate to lose him. what was that just completely annihilated right there uh, like you said I, I do agree with this where it's just that first three to five minutes that really matter because look how much space that team always already has right now team ashy needed that fight in order to get back in it and now they not only have to win the next fight but the fight after that and the fight after and the fight after and they can't have anyone leave the bot oh, that's for the a brutal rest pack. of the round brutal two stagger of, yeah it's great stagger too two minutes and 30 seconds to push the bot over 60 meters including that first checkpoint it's going to be a huge uphill battle for team ashy to stay in this map Oh, well, you know, Tasty and Dexter have uh, traded with Debs uh, with Dibs here. Uh, Nevix out of Mech, so things could go either way here with the Coalescence in effect here from Asian Ninja. Burning down Wastebands remaining HP. Invisible. A little bit of sustain found from Kabadozer, and the pin and the, and the shatter are more than enough to correspond with a threat dealt by Team Ashy. However, the Visor oh. helping to swing the fight. Tasty Taco walking away with three with only... Oh, man. I mean, that, that has basically reached the finish line. It's still so winnable here for Team Ashy. It's winnable, but it's very, very difficult in order for him to get through here. They used a lot of resources in order to hold on there. I, I, the soldier... He thinks someone's around him, but there's really no one to worry about just yet. The main issue you got to deal with is going to be that Cassidy. That Cassidy needs to go down ASAP before he gets that dead eye off and make sure you can get those kills pick quick because look at this. You already lost a Lucio. It's only so much you can do so far. Oh man, Dexter tried to pull the moves out on Crimson Wolf there as well. And wasn't quite able to make the uh, Wraith last long enough for Finagle and Angle uh, behind the dead eye, which means that for now, Team Always gets to continue to push this objective. Things becoming increasingly uh, more futile for Team Ashy. What they want here is a good reset. That's a fantastic coalescence to come out for both sides. One to clean up, and uh, well, for uh, Always, it's to clean up. And for Team Ashy, it's an indication that they won't have the coalescence for next fight. But you know what else no. they won't have is the Blossom from Dexter. But the bot is, oh no, the bot is running. I thought, I yeah. thought someone from uh, Ashy had, had started running off with it. It looks like they did actually. I mean, he's Who's out in the back there. lines of team, of team always? I believe that's Dexter just sitting out there just waiting for his moment, but he needs the help with the team here. You only got 30 seconds. You have to be on the bot from here on out. You do get the early pick. The beat's gonna help you out just for a little bit. So it's gonna go back into Ashy's favor just for a little bit longer. But the question is, how long can they be, keep that momentum up? It has to be perfection from here on out just to get to map five. And even with that, it's going to be very difficult. You got to win two more fights just to get to the barrier, one to push it over, and then three just to get it past the finish line. So a super, super uphill battle left for Team Ashley. Very easy for Team Always to take it here. It's the Terror Surge in effect, and now everyone oh. is rushing the Tactical Visoring Soldier as the Overtime Wick triggers. Things are looking pretty bleak here for Team Ashy. Forced off of the objective, and now only a few remnants of their formation left. It, actually, yes, actually just the supports here remaining. WebMD ends up going down. Asian Ninja, during the cast of the Coralescence, ends up demolished as well by the Spear from Booze. The Spear that started and finished it all here on... New Queen Street rewarding team always not only with the map win, but the win of the of this weekend's Hyperion Blitz Cup. And what a way to end it too. Just Crimson Wolf on the Cassidy. This was the dead eye, I think it was his best as I so far. We was able to get two right on the far left. You're early in play, even getting Zarya out just at the end there. Team always will take the first Hyperion Blitz Cup. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, and this is uh, this is just one uh, Hyperion Blitz Cup, so you guys can look forward to uh, to more in the future. At least for now, the show isn't over quite yet. We'll be coming back uh, at you guys uh, with not more Overwatch 2 action, but a post-game interview on the other side of a short break. Don't go anywhere, because we aren't. We'll see you guys here in a couple of minutes. Thank you. 
Welcome back from the break, everyone. Uh, we have gone from riveting Overwatch 2 action and gameplay to a riveting interview with uh, with uh, the uh, with team. I'm sorry, with always uh, of team always. Uh, it was a fun series this evening that we got to watch. Uh, always, we uh, we actually saw you guys uh, drop the first map and then uh, really come back in uh, with the mm -hmm. uh, with the next three. Uh, I'm kind of curious about what changed from map one to uh, uh, to New Queen Street. Well, apparently, according to my teammates, they are not very good on King of the Hill. And, you know, from what I expected, that seems to be the case, too. So, you know, any other uh, teams that want to capitalize on that, then, hey, you better choose uh, King of the Hill next. But, um, you know, um, we just kind of pulled it together. It's, you know, it's, I think it's a matter of synergy, you know, really. We just kind of get our stuff together. Uh, as more we played, you know, we kind of got a feel for you know, what characters we like to play, you know, how we play. And uh, we quickly got the gist of how we all work together as a team. Fair enough. I mean, uh, on the topic of having those kinds of changes, on the last map, you decided to sit out and have booze take over the tank roll. What was the thought process behind that? And was it only because you hate push like everyone else does? I mean, of course, I hate push like the average mm -hmm. layman, you know, but... This is actually a part of strategy <laughs> that I decided to uh, use. Uh, you might not know, but I actually was not here for the original uh, pick or the roster pickup on this Wednesday, I feel, I think. And, you know, people may think that, oh, you know, it's because he forgot or, you know, he didn't remember. Uh, but no, that was part of my strategy. And this is also part of my strategy of switching the players that we have so that the enemy team does not know exactly what team we're running up against. You know, most teams, they play against one specific kind of team composition. They know how the main tank is going to play because the main tank usually is just their main tank. But we actually have three tank players on a team. And so you have a gamble. Which tank is going to play? Which players are going to be subbed out? Am I going to play? Me, always the captain? Is somebody else going to play? You really don't know. And that kind of spiciness, that kind of level of RNG, it, it's similar to gambling, and you really don't know what we're going to do. And I feel like it worked out because, I mean, hey, look at the results. Uh, yeah, they they speak for themselves. Uh, uh, three and one over Team Ashy is uh, is a nice result to have, and I like this narrative as well. Always just pulling strings from uh, from from the shadowy depths uh, from which he emerges and disappears into. Uh, that's uh, that that's I feel like that's very fitting for you always. Um, mm, thank uh, you. What? Um. Uh. So you know, part of that uh, part of that strategy is you know as as or part of the strategy of rotating uh, uh people in and out um you know what are what are some of the what are the some of the like identities that you guys uh, that you've discovered you guys like to walk out on you know so i you know we got to see quite a bit of rush tonight like the reinhardt brawl comp but you know what what were one of those other two strategies uh, uh or one or two of those other strategies that you guys considered well you know i've as you've seen the king of the hill we also have you know we have a ball comp and stuff but you know I'm sure you know, uh, Balcom runs less heals, and so that requires a bit more coordination. And obviously, you've seen in King of the Hill, uh, it didn't work as well. But I'm sure, you know, as more you play, the more that'll be more uh, effective in later matches. Um, I would say that, hmm, there really isn't that much of a difference. But in terms of composition, but in terms of play style, I feel that would be the main factor. Because everybody has their own style of play, whether they're, you know, passive or aggressive. I'm sure you've seen in the new Queen Street, we were very aggressive in how we played. Yeah. Very <laughs> cheeky too, considering, uh, I mean, I saw Lucio beating after their match, uh, one of the team fights were done, you know, that kind yeah. of cheekiness. Yeah. I feel I should be reserved for, you know, maybe the grand finals or so, but, you know, I'm a man, you know, I, I have to respect that kind of, you know, confidence. Yeah, I got to get the, a little bit of the BM in there. <laughs> just a little <laughs> that is bit. True. It just a little bit. Uh, well, speaking on topic of that confidence, I am curious because there's only so much we can see from here uh, in the booth. What was the most hype play for your com uh, team compositions? Uh, 
or just, you know, comms in general? And can you describe it in vivid detail in 20 words or more? 20 words or more? Oh, buddy, you better put a minimum on this instead of a maximum. Okay. Because I remember Ten. second on <laughs> King's Row. Oh, well, I'm going to take that as a joke and just continue going in. <laughs> I remember on King's Row, me, oh, I was subbed in because guess what? I'm not only a captain, I'm also a player. Played Lucio, third point defense, managed to boop off the Rhine, who was nanoed. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. We managed, they managed to keep the point after that, you know, in about 20 seconds or so. But hey, I felt really good about that, considering, as I'm sure you know, in Overwatch 2, the tanks have uh, knockback resistance. Yeah, so, so getting those A very feels good memo for me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm a, a Lucio OTP since Overwatch 2 as well. Um, and, mm. and, and getting those environmentals on on the tanks, it's it's so challenging, but oh man, so rewarding. So rare, That's but so are. good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, always. Uh, you are a uh, uh, you are a very talkative individual, which has made this interview an absolute blast. Is there anywhere that we can seek out more of your words of wisdom? Perhaps there's a Twitter or Twitch that we could follow, or maybe you'd like to uh, instead mm -hmm. take a moment to uh, to shout out any of your team members or uh, people behind the scenes making things happen. Are there any shout outs you want to make? Okay, well, I'll do two shout outs, and if you don't mind. Yeah, My own shout out, since you asked specifically, I do stream on Twitch, always tired underscore. Um, I stream most days, but you know, just like my team, it is very random. But I also would like to shout out a VTuber friend of mine, Aurelia VT, a very close friend of mine who's helped me a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and you know, us Overwatch players, we can use all the help we can get. Always, thank you so much, not only for the spectacular series that we got to watch this evening, and uh, and even if you missed the draft day, uh, you know, putting this uh, merry band together, but also for uh, joining us for a post-game interview, uh, and uh, and of course the heartwarming shout-outs as well, and definitely. Be and sure thank you for inviting me. It was a yeah, pleasure to be absolutely. here. That was always of Team Always, and with that, Portal, I think, uh, I think you and I are uh, just about finished for the night. Yep, time to power down and start recharging for the next tournament, whenever that is. I, mean, I, I don't think, do we have another, huh, even, do we have another folks tournament ready? I don't I don't know if we do. I don't anyway. know. I don't know. You know, oh, maybe weird. maybe just uh, mark your calendars for April 15th. Uh, no oh, reason subtle. for me to know any specific dates. Uh, you know, just uh, kind of keep your Sounds eye like on, the, uh, on the nearby horizon uh, for more Hyperion news and updates. Uh, April 15th, I joke about accidentally leaking it, but actually do be aware of the date as that will be the um, uh, that will be the registration, uh, uh, I believe, for the Hyperion Blitz Cup 2. Uh, we're gonna be. Uh, that'll be the day of the tournament, actually. Um, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for announcements on the Hyperion server. So that if you guys want to uh, register for that, you guys can uh, can absolutely be a part of a of a tournament showcase blitz match like we did today. Uh, as part of that endeavor, make sure that you have either joined the Hyperion Discord or that you guys are following us here on Twitter or on Twitch as well at Hyperion Co. That way, you guys can stay up to date with all the uh, uh, Hyperion workings, uh, including some very exciting announcements that Hyperion has historically and will continue to make, uh, including this uh, Hyperion Blitz uh, uh, Cup Part 2, if you will. Uh, while you're over on Twitter, uh, go ahead and drop me a follow as well, at Lord Thethan. And uh, are you on Twitter as well, Portal? No. I don't think he is. No. You, you cannot find me at Portal M5 because one through four are taken. So I know it sucks, but I mean, hey, it happens. And don't bother looking for Portal. Just just make sure that you followed Hyperion. Uh, uh, actually, although other Portal, <laughs> Portal and I have some pretty funny Twitters right now. So Ethan's never gone that. to the Never. Uh, that's all I'm saying. How dare you? How dare you accuse me of such a thing? For he now, guys. Anime, it's fake. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my 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 anger for you, Portal, is so real right now. Even if anime is fake, it, it, guys. It uh, <laughs> <laughs> for more clowning around, you guys can definitely tune into uh, to the next stream on April 15th. Hopefully it's me and Portal back in the booth if we're invited uh, again to do this for you guys. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for all things Hyperion. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. Be good to each other, and we'll see you next time.